What's up you guys? My name is Ariana and welcome to my YouTube channel. As you guys can already tell from the title, today's video is going to be some tips and tricks on transitioning as well as on Big Chop. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. If you guys are interested in seeing my personal natural hair journey, I'm going to put it up here in a card and then just go ahead and click that link so you can get the full backstory and then come back to this video. If you have seen my natural hair journey video, then you guys will know that I transitioned. I went natural probably eight years ago when I was in high school. I was playing sports all the time, like literally all year round. I played sports and I was tired of sweating my hair out as well as like y'all can see my hair texture it's not quite 4c I'm more of a 4a 4b and for me whenever I would get a relaxer my hair would be like dumb flat and I just don't like how that looks so I just told my mom I was like mom look I appreciate you and all your contributions to society but your girl is tired of getting relaxed and here we are eight years later now I understand that transitioning is not the easier of the two options to go natural but since that was my personal choice I just wanted to give you guys some tips on that that helped me along the journey tip number one for transitioning is to keep your hair in protective styles as long as you have straight ends in my opinion the more that you have your hair out and it's like natural and then straight on the ends you're gonna put your hair at more risk for damage and breakage because as you guys know Oh, well if you did transition you guys will know like that line of demarcation is where you'll get most of your breakage at and it's the struggle <laughs> it really is the struggle so I would highly recommend that you keep your hair in a protective style for as long as possible while you're transitioning that way you will have a less amount of breakage tip number two for transitioning has to deal with the detangling process like I said that line of demarcation is where most people will experience the most amount of breakage so what I would recommend while you're detangling is to do it gently and you have to have patience if you're not patient when it comes to detangling transitioning hair then you might as well just go ahead and cut off the straight ends because you're gonna have a lot of breakage also when you're about to detangle your hair make sure that your hair is thoroughly moisturized now I don't really know whether it should be dry or wet I'm just gonna give my personal opinion I detangle my natural hair when it's wet and I also detangled my transitioning hair when it was wet now again I'm not a professional I'm just giving you my personal recommendation I would make sure that your hair is highly and thoroughly moisturized and then take your time while detangling Tip number three is try to stay away from hot tools, except for the blow dryer. I don't really feel no ways about the blow dryer because I use it all the time and when I was transitioning, I didn't have any additional breakage while using the blow dryer. What I mean by hot tools is flat irons, curling irons, those type of things, hot combs. Stay away from all of that because the whole purpose of transitioning is to grow your natural hair and to keep the natural curl pattern. If you're constantly applying heat to your natural hair while transitioning, you're really just kind of defeating the whole purpose of going natural as it is because you're already damaging your new natural hair that you're trying to grow. I'm not saying that heat is bad, but while you're transitioning, you're trying to see what your actual curl pattern is. So in my opinion, you're kind of defeating the purpose because you're never gonna fall in love with your natural hair if it's always straight, you know what I mean? Tip number four is gradually cut off your straight ends when you're in between protective styles. It probably took me two and a half years just to finally get all of my straight ends cut off, but that's because I was afraid of being bald <laughs> and I didn't know how to do short hair at the time because again, I was in high school, I was probably like, how old was I? I was probably like 15 when I decided to actually go natural. I know some of you out there may be tired of dealing with your straight ends currently, but don't feel pressured or rushed into cutting off your straight ends if you're not ready to let go of your hair. Now, I will say that the quicker you cut off your ends, the more you're gonna fall in love with your natural hair because it's gonna be all natural, and then you're actually gonna be able to have like a whole documentary of your growth. I wish I would've done that, but I didn't know. But yeah, if you're like me, it took about two and a half years for me to transition all the way through, and I just gradually cut my ends off in between protective styles. But at the same time, don't be holding on to your straight hair because honestly, it's like preventing you from going through that whole liberation experience. I say just do it, but again, I'm kind of biased because I've been natural for a long time, so I know what it's like, but if you're new, just take your time tip number five goes back into the protective styling that i was talking about in tip number one in my opinion the best protective styles that you can wear while you're transitioning would be crochet braids of some sort or wigs i would strongly recommend against sew-ins with leave out or anything that involves your real hair being out that you have to blend into your bundles or your weave or whatever it is because again that's applying heat to your hair and then it's like going to be heat damage or it's going to be a different texture up here or wherever your leave out is at and then the back is going to be your natural curl pattern so just make sure that you get a lace front a closure box braids crochet senegalese twist anything like that you'll be fine but just 
don't have leave out, please. <laughs> the last tip that I have for transitioning hair is to be very careful and cautious when you're removing your protective styles because you can also cause a lot of breakage and damage during this time because your ends are weaker than your natural hair. I remember when I used to take down my braids or my twists that I had while I was transitioning and my ends would always be so dry and they would be very brittle and I would just be worried about breaking my hair off at that time. So again, that's why I would cut it off as I go. But while taking them down, I would just be patient and take my time. All right, now we're on to the big chop tips. Looking back, I kind of wish that I would have done the big chop instead of transitioning because it would have been like a whole transformation. But you know, I can't do anything about that now. The main tips that I have for the big chop people out there is to keep your hair and your scalp moisturized as much as you can. When it comes to your hair, you can use a cream product or like a curl milk or something like that. But on your scalp, I would recommend you only using oils or maybe grease if that's what your hair likes. Pretty much just keeping your hair moisturized is going to help your hair grow faster versus it being dry because when it's dry, it's the struggle and it's not gonna wanna grow. Tip number two for the big chop people is to be confident because I know some people can be bullies out there and they can be mean, but at the end of the day, those same people bullying you were probably not brave enough or confident enough to do what you did by cutting off all of your hair. So forget them people, <laughs> cause um, you popping sis. Also be patient because it takes hair a long time to grow, especially to get to my length. Like I said, I've been natural for eight years, so this wasn't no overnight success story. Just love your hair at every stage that it's in because I promise you, if you're focusing on getting your hair long or big or whatever it is, you're never gonna be happy with the hair that you actually have. And then you're gonna miss out on your blessings that you have right in front of you. Just embrace your hair. Stop looking at every new girl on Instagram with 3C or 3A or whatever it is or 4C. Just do you and be happy with your hair. Tip number three for big chop people is if you're not comfortable with your hair yet or you're not confident, you can always throw on a wig. That would be my advice because wigs are just copping. Also, if your hair is not long enough to get braids or whatever it is, wigs are gonna be your best friend. If you need a wig, shop arianalyf.com. The last tip that I have for big chop people is once your hair is long enough to wear braids and things like that, I would strongly suggest that you stick to low manipulation hairstyles. Those would be things like crochet, box braids, twists. I would recommend that you stay away from very tight ponytails or things that put a lot of stress or strain on your hair or your edges because that's going to hinder your growth as well. And that's all the tips that I have. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up. Also subscribe if you are new and follow me on all of my social media platforms and visit my website. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.